64 out right now. Nice breeze. This is ideal. Starting with a chatterbait. I'm throwing pretty random setup too. I thought I was buying a spinning rod, a Daiwa $50 inshore spinning rod just for something extra to throw on the flats, but I ended up getting the bait caster by accident, seven foot medium. So we're gonna see how it works today as a chatterbait rod because I don't really have a saltwater bait casting reel. If I bring this Revo into the salt, it'll be gone within the hour. So far, I like the way it feels as far as ripping a chatterbait through the grass. 17 pound straight floral right now. There he is. Big one. All right, well, I would say this works as a chatterbait rod. I mean, he's not a giant, but that's a solid fish. Caught a bunch of nice ones this morning with Johnny. Had this GoPro in the car, just forgot it, of course, when we left to go to the spot, but that's a nice one. Man, just a nice, healthy fish. All right. I felt good on this rod, I'm not gonna lie. We might have found a sneaky little pond chatterbait rod. I, I don't know, man, I just, I just love fishing so much, I'll never get old. What have we here? Another fence situation? can't help but think that maybe, just maybe there's bass back in here. And also probably like a man-eating gator, I don't know. It's a pretty sketchy spot. Ooh, osprey. Or no, it's not an osprey. Some kind of seabird. But doesn't this just look like it would have them? Oh no. Can't lose the chatterbait like that, that would be pretty detrimental. All right, well, that was worth a few casts as well. That's the kind of things you do in Florida and sometimes lightning strikes. All right, we are descending upon some new water. I'm interested, looks pretty good. I'm going the one bait strategy. I mean, it would probably be better to throw some kind of worm, especially in this stuff, but we're gonna stick with the chatter for now. I like this rod too, I wanna get more swings in on this rod and maybe potentially catch a big one. See how it holds up. See if I could trust it to be in my boat arsenal for 22. Ooh, that was already a fish up shallow. There's another fish, yeah. Well, this pond's got him. Those were small, but still, obviously we gotta get over here. This is where it looks like it's gonna go down. Oh yeah, today's Super Bowl Sunday. Not too concerned about that. All right, well, I mean, clearly over there where those two drains are, the drains at these ponds, almost always important spots. There's nothing about this one that really impresses me. Now, I think there's one behind it, so that might be interesting. Will it be juicy or will it be grass? Or will it be a shithole? Will there be any water at all? Hmm. Oh yeah, it's way juicier, I'll tell you that much. Because you can't even really get to much of it. Yeah, this is where the bass are. You see? This is way more along the lines of what you would hope to find bring a kayak back here. Oh yeah, I mean, this is good. Of course, 
not going to be able to fish much of it myself. Very impossible to traverse, but you know that we found something here. Whether we return to it or not, another question. <sighs> I gave up. I'm sorry. Returned to familiar water because there's only one time of year where all of the big ones are shallow. So you also, while finding new water is important, if the day is coming to a close and you haven't capitalized on that, you should return to some spots that you know have them because every day when you're down here this time of year at the ponds, there's a chance that you're gonna catch the biggest bass of your life. So why not take advantage of that at the proven spots? So that's what we're doing right now. Probably tired of seeing this particular one. What can I say? It just always puts out quality bass. There's no denying that. Yet for doing so good at this pond, have not caught the quote unquote lake legend. Still going for that. That's a pretty good one. I gotta say, I like this rod for the chatterbait because that was a classic chatterbait bite where you didn't feel the thump. And this thing eased into this bass pretty nice. That's a good one too. All right, all right. Nothing huge, but oh man, look at the colors on them. Pretty fish. Yeah, this pond, this pond just has them. I will say if you're looking for some tips, like off the bat, things to look for at a Florida pond to determine if it's got good ones or not. First thing I'm gonna say is you can never truly know because we've caught some monsters in highly questionable spots, but one thing you can look for is gators, presence of especially good sized gators. If there's a good gator in your pond, I've thought about that because in this one there's a big one, like an eight footer. That's typically a sign that the pond has a good resource system to it going, you know? A lot of bluegills, a lot of tilapia, just a lot of things to eat on in general, which is good for big bass, obviously, as well. My second tip is one that you can't tell all times of year, because this pond actually does get really nice lily pads in the summer that they do sit under. But right now, obviously, all the lily pads are dead. Grass, finding good grass, key. Some of the best ponds I've fished down here have good hydrilla, good eel grass anything really, pepper grass. It's what makes the bass go round down here more than anywhere else I've fished. And the third thing I would say, oh my God, that's a giant. I mean, I don't know. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's him. Should I say that's her? That's a giant. Holy shit. That's another giant. Yeah. And the chatterbait comes out. Air Raid Coastal. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. I mean, <laughs> at least seven, right? <sighs> oh man. That's why you fish the familiar water. You know, Uncle Larry Outdoors, if you've been paying attention, we've been on a little streak recently. And that's just gonna add to it right there. Get a quick picture and put him back. Here he is. I mean, I know no scale, but that's in that seven to eight range, I would say. It's 
definitely in that seven to eight range. Oh, what a beautiful fish. I love Florida. That's the biggest bass I've ever caught in this pond. <laughs> this is the perfect transition point too, right where the shallow spawning flat turns into the deeper section of the pond where we were getting them on, you know, spinner baits. Oh my, what just happened there? I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I am thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this seven foot medium, $50 Daiwa Air Raid Coastal. Purchased it on Tackle Warehouse, thinking it was a spinning rod for the inshore. And that was my goal today. Like, that's why I'm not switching up from the chatterbait. I know with this flat calm weather, a worm would probably be a very ideal bait to throw. And I know they absolutely munch a worm in here. But my goal was really to see how this rod fishes with the chatterbait. Because with this kind of parabolic action that it has while still being an inshore rod, so it has enough backbone. I feel like that's kind of the perfect setup for a chatterbait. Look at that. The Uncle Larry shirts are in. Oh man, I don't like those white birds. Those white toucan Sam looking things. The sandhill cranes are all right. A lot of the ducks around here are really cool. But those white ones gives off like Grim Reaper, Angel of Death vibes. I don't know. We've returned to the house but again the send is not quite over We've got an sd card with a little more space fresh battery same chatterbait let's go see if we can get one behind the house i think this pond is kind of a prime example of just how drastically a little bit of pressure can affect certain spots because when we first moved across the street there and started coming to this pond it was so good i mean you would come Three to five fish would be a regular occurrence. All healthy, two to four pounders. There's a couple big ones mixed in. Kai actually ended up losing like a six, seven in here. But very quickly after the spawn, we just stopped getting bit here. And it never really picked up again. I think the sun definitely did something to that. So we're going home. If you did happen to enjoy this video or any of the others, a like, comment, would be much appreciated. We'll get back to you. That's it for now. I don't know where you're going to find us next. Fresh salt, Florida, South Carolina. It's all coming up in the near future. See you guys soon.